What is going on, YouTube? Northeast Ohio Sports Cards here for some NBA talk. That's right, my YouTube people. A sports video. Everybody relax. Everybody relax. Today, we are going to talk about five players who have just been absolutely decimated in their current market prices. I know you could say that. I could pick basically all of modern NBA and come to that same conclusion. And you wouldn't be necessarily wrong, uh, but we're going to pick five that have just been extra hammered. Uh, kind of the double whammy of they just haven't played well. And the modern market is way down. A lot of these, and these aren't the five most, uh, there are some other guys that went down slightly more in some cases, but a couple of these are, players that were hardest hit at least three of them were in the top three for sure and a lot of these were guys this is not to necessarily toot my own horn but a few of these guys were players that i was not big on in the nba preseason and i think a couple of these are going to be semi at least one of these i think is going to be very surprising uh because it's a player a lot of people liked and i actually didn't mind him uh in the preseason some of these guys just got love, and I just did not did not see it. Uh, and the market has agreed with me. But once again, we could pretty much pick anybody we want right now, and they would be down an astronomical sum in some cases. But these guys more so than others. So let's get into it. Market Movers links down below. We will be using Market Movers exclusively in this video to go over these five players. And I'm going to, I don't think uh, there's one guy on this list I'm intrigued by. To be quite honest, the other four I think are, I'm not going to call it DOA, but I'm not touching them at pretty much any price. I wasn't big on most of these players to begin with. Um, and I think, in fact, I'll just say it. I think four of these players, we have seen the highest that their prices have ever been. So whatever the peak was for these four guys, four of these five, I don't think it ever gets back past those peaks again. That's just my, we'll call that the hot take. So let's run these down really quick. Make this a nice little short video. Why most of you are watching this, I am probably at a card show on Saturday morning. We'll see. First up, PJ Washington. Uh, I ran these charts back 60 days. So on all these charts, it puts us um, about a week before the NBA season officially started. So kind of like at the peak of the market um, at the beginning of the NBA season there when everything was ramping up. So that's what we're working with here. 60 day chart. PJ Washington over the last 60 days on his PSA 10 prism. And once again, we're using base prism PSA 10 for all these is down 57%. Uh, started at 93, ends at 40, peaked at 150. Uh, so he is down over half. I have never been a big fan of PJ Washington. Guys like this, I always try to project forward of like, what's his best? Like, what do I see him being? And I just didn't have like, I, you know, I never saw like all star potential with him. I just figured he would be a above average rotational big that is a decent NBA player, but not at an all-star level. So I never really understood where the, a lot of people liked him. I just never understood where it was coming from, from him. Uh, and he's been fine this year. I've, you know, I've used him in DFS. He's had some pretty good games, but nothing sexy or flashy. He's just your above average NBA big man. End of story. So, uh, he is down a nice, cool 57%. And like I said, I don't believe this is one of the guys. I do not believe this is a buying opportunity. I will not touch PJ Washington. I own zero PJ Washington for the most part. Next, uh, one of the two surprising ones, Tyler Hero. Oh, boy. This is one I knew he was down. I didn't realize he was down this much. 
So Tyler Hero, 60 days ago, PSA 10 Prism was going for $282. Today, it's going for $177. Over that period, it spiked to a high of around $400. He is down 37%. Uh, 100 bucks off the price of that PSA 10 from the start of this chart, uh, down to 177. He has had a very up and down season. Um, he's had some really good games. He's had COVID protocol problems, injury problems, uh, with a neck issue. And he's also had some just absolutely monster games as well. Tyler Hero, I've always been indifferent on. I didn't necessarily love him at his prices in the lead up to the season, but I didn't necessarily hate him either. Like I understood based off his playoff performance. Uh, He is one I am not personally looking to buy, but I get it if you are. Um, He's not for me, but once again, I understand if you like him and would want to buy into him on the dip, uh, if you will to steal a line from my last NBA video. Uh, but he's one I am not buying on the dip. I am not, I'm not an anti Tyler hero, but I'm just not like a believer in Tyler hero um, to the degree that most people or a lot of people are. So I'll take a pass on this one and spend my money elsewhere. Um, but yeah, his stuff has been hit pretty hard across the board. Next. Uh, This one is the one that I'm the most surprised by and the most intrigued by um, to potentially maybe buy in the dip. I'm not like I'm not actively seeking it out like I was. You know, I made the video the other day with the five guys I am looking to buy. I'm not looking to buy him, but I'm at least intrigued. You know, if something happened to fall in my lap, I wouldn't say no. But um, yeah, Kobe White. Whew. Whew. 60 days ago, his PSA 10 was going for 200 bucks. At one point in time over that 60 day period, it spiked up all the way to 300 right before the season started. Um, so this was a $300 card at one point, a couple of days after these charts ran. But even at the $200 starting point, he is down 44%, uh, down $87. And it's almost more than that based off of where sales went right after this 60 day chart, but even being down 44%, that is a beating and a half. Um, Zach Levine has kind of stolen the show there. Uh, and Kobe just hasn't really cooked like he did over that stretch last season. I'm intrigued by him. Like I said, uh, the scary part is, is a lot of his value was really tied up in a two week run last year. February slash March, whenever that was, basically a year ago. Um, you know, he was playing okay in his rookie season, and then he had like a two week run there where he just went nuts, uh, and his prices soared. And then COVID hit and shut the season down, uh, and they weren't invited to the bubble. So a, a lot of his hype was really built off of a two week sample size, uh, and he has just not backed that up. He's shown some flashes. He's had some good games. Uh, And every time I talk bad about him, he comes out and spikes. So we will see what happens. I think the last time I mentioned Kobe White in a video was right around here. And then he had a really good game, a couple good games, and his prices spiked back up again. But you could see it has gone right back down. Now, once again, every modern NBA, not every, but three quarters of the NBA modern players are down right now. But... His has been hit much harder than others. In fact, he was in the top five players that have gone down the most. And I mostly looking at, at modern guys, you know, I need to go back and look at vintage stuff. That stuff or classics, if you will. Uh, those guys are all on fire. But yeah, Kobe White's prices just annihilated right now. Next on the list. Uh, and this was one I got. Uh, yeah, I famously made this quote. Um, not too terribly long ago. I got one of these right and one of these very wrong. I was not big on DeAndre Hunter or Cam Reddish to start the season. Um, I did not like either one of them due to playing time concerns. And I was right on Cam Reddish. I was dead wrong on DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter looks great. I completely whiffed on that one. 
two of my worst calls of the season were probably not being in on DeAndre Hunter and not being in on Colin Sexton. Uh, those two by far are my absolute biggest misses of the NBA season. And it's not even really close to be quite honest with you. Uh, but yeah, Cam Reddish over the last 60, also down 44%. Uh, started the season or right before the season off at 148. Currently sits at 81 down a whopping 44, and I am not looking to touch him. I have not seen anything out of him, uh, and I was not a believer in the preseason. Um, Even at these extremely reduced prices, I will take a pass and spend that money on something else. Once again, it's not always necessary that I don't like the player or the card. In this case, I don't, but just in general, you know, factor this out of it. We'll just call this player X. Player X's PSA 10 prism is $81. I might be indifferent on player X, but that's $81 I could put towards something else that I like better. So even if I kind of liked Cam Reddish, I would rather spend that money somewhere else on a different player. I would rather have for that same $81 going back to the last uh, NBA video, I would rather have a Siakam optic for 75 to use that as an example. So Cam Reddish also just getting absolutely hammered. Last but not least, and this should, should should surprise nobody as I trip over my own tongue, uh, then this player was down the most by far uh, of the NBA season, and he previously made a video when I wrapped up um, the end of January, and he was number one on the list then, too. He holds his spot, the great, the legend, Bull Bull. PSA 10 prism down 67% from the late off season, early NBA season. 60 days ago, this was a $180 card today. It is a $60 card down $120 in just 60 days. Uh, and once again, for almost a 70% decrease, um, he got tons of preseason hype. He snuck into a game and has basically not played since and really didn't put up huge numbers in the limited run that he did get like he did in the bubble. Uh, Once again, his value was completely tied to basically a three-game stretch, two-game stretch maybe, during the NBA bubble scrimmage games is what really set his value off. Uh, and he has essentially done nothing since other than internet legend Bull Bull. Other than being the internet legend Bull Bull, that's all he's really done. Um, and this market right now moves quick, even for guys that are playing well. Uh, see, Luca, Zion, Ja, Trey um, are all down even after playing well. Uh, I'll be curious to see. This is semi unrelated. But I will be curious to see on tomorrow's week in review video. I'm going to specifically focus on some of those modern guys that have actually a lot of those guys have really broken out this week. Luca has been on an absolute tear the past seven days. Trey Young's been playing really good. Zion has been playing exceptionally well. Um, I'm recording this uh, late Friday night after the Jazz Pelicans game or not Jazz Pelicans game, the Pelicans Mavericks game. Uh, Luca had a monster stat line and so did Zion. So I will be very curious when prepping for the Sunday video on Saturday night, um, how the last week of ultra modern prices look. It's probably going to be a big focus of that video. Uh, where we starting to see a rebound. If prices are still going down after this week, uh, I'm not concerned, but we have a ways to go then before we pull out of the dip. Um, And I'm wondering if the dip goes all the way through the NBA All-Star break at this point in time. Um, But we'll see. I think this week's going to tell us a lot on modern prices uh, just based off of the play of the top end of the modern market. Um, Those guys, like I said, have just been playing fantastically. uh, And we will see if prices rebound on that. But yeah. These are the five guys that are pretty much not necessarily the top five. Uh, Like I said, some of these three of the five on this list are the top of the list. Uh, And then I sprinkled in some other interesting names, other guys making the list 
uh, that there are other guys on the list that did not make the video. Uh, the other really big one that lost a lot was Seku is down like 60 some percent. I think he was number three or number four of the top five. Uh, and I don't remember the other one off the top of my head, uh, but these are the most interesting names. Devonte Graham was way up there, but not as high as PJ Washington was. Uh, and once again, he just got kind of buried. Lamelo's kind of stolen that spotlight uh, and scary. Terry has been playing really well. Lamelo, another one that I may have, it's hard to say that I've whiffed on Lamelo. I'm not big on Lamelo, but there hasn't been anything to buy of Lamelo. I am not chasing draft pick cards. You won't catch me dead buying a draft pick card, uh, and you won't touch me, or you won't find me buying a hundred to two hundred dollar hoops rookie card for the best deal on eBay either. Uh, if I'm going to invest in a player, I will wait for their optic or select or prism to do it. Uh, I am not going to chase hoops because it's the hot product so um but my comments have been and continue to be that i am not a fan of lamello from a long-term investment standpoint i could be completely wrong that's just me and i'm just as i like to say i'm just a guy talking into a whole microphone so uh that's all i got for you guys today depending on when you are watching this if you're watching this saturday morning when it posts uh, there will be a Marvel video, a live stream later on Saturday. Uh, I am going to break a box of 90 Marvel Universe, which is the box that is the hottest one to get. It's between a two and three thousand dollar box, depending on the prices on any given day. So we're going to be ripping one of those hunting for PSA gradable cards. Uh, so there will be a live stream later. If you're not into Marvel, stop it anyways hang out i will absolutely at the end of that stream i usually hang out and field questions uh and i will gladly ask answer sports cards or, or non-sports cards uh trading card questions no problem and then sunday morning for the normal uh week in sports cards or the week that was um doing the weekly recap on that so those are the next two things that you will see out of me, a live stream, maybe later today. Maybe it already happened. Go watch the VOD, future people. Uh, and then the week that was on Sunday morning. And like I said, I am planning on, if you are watching this once again as it posts, uh, maybe sneaking out. There is a very small semi-local card show tomorrow. It's typically mediocre at best. Um, but I got to run out and do some errands tomorrow anyways. And I kind of, am going to be in that neck of the woods. It's there's no admission. So I could stop in fairly easily and kind of see what's going on. So we'll see what happens. If anything good comes out of that, I will report back on the weekly video on Sunday morning. So, uh, once again, that's all I have for you guys. YouTube stuff down below. Catch you on the next one. Peace.